Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about cell part two. In the part one of this video, we talked about the definition of cell, the history, cell theory, the types of cell, the outline you can see on the screen. While in today's class, we'll be talking about the cell components, as the parts that make up the cell, such as the cell wall, the cell membrane, nucleus, we'll be describing the structure. And we'll also talk about the function of these components. So let's start with the cell wall. The cell wall is a non-living, rigid structure seen outside the plasma membrane in fungi and in plant cells. It is, however, absent in animal cells and it is made of different components in different eukaryotic organisms. In plants, it is composed of cellulose, hemicellulose, protein, and peptin. While in fungi, it is composed of cellulose, galatans, mannose, and calcium carbonate. The cell wall is divided into the following layer, middle lamella, primary wall, and in some cases, secondary wall. Let's take a look at this diagram. You can see the middle lamella of the plant cell wall. You can see the primary cell wall. No, you can see the peptin, the thread-like peptin. You can see the cellulose microfiber being displayed. These are the various components of the plant cell wall. What are the functions of the cell wall? It actually provides shape to the cell. It helps in cell-to-cell -cell interaction. It also protects the cell from injury, undesirable molecule, and pathogen. The second layer of the cell, or the second component, is the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is also regarded as the cell membrane, and it's a semi-permeable membrane that separates the inside of the cell from the outside. As you can see from the diagram, the fundamental structure of the plasma membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. Bilayer simply means two layers of phospholipid. Now you can see the upper layer and the bottom layer. This layer forms a stable barrier between the inside of the cell, the cytoplasm, and the outside environment, both which are usually aqueous solutions. Let's take a look at the structure of the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane consists of protein, carbohydrate, glycolipid, and two layers of phospholipid. Phospholipid means lipid with a phosphate group. As you can see from the diagram, the phospholipid are actually two layers, and we have the integral protein, which allow materials to selectively what pass through this membrane. This is because they act as channel, anchor, or even receptors. Take a look at the diagram of the phospholipid bilayer. The outer layer, which is the phosphate end, is hydrophilic. They love water. And the middle part of both ends is actually hydrophobic. Singer and Nicholson describe the structure of a phospholipid as the fluid mosaic model. What is the function of the plasma membrane? It is selectively permeable, selecting what goes in and out of the cell. It protects the cell from injury and shock, and it also transmits cellular signal. Let's talk about the nucleus as a cell component. The nucleus is a double membrane structure that houses all genetic information or material. It is also regarded as the brain of the cell and is present in all cells of plant and animal except in human red blood cell and sealed cells of plant. The parts of the nucleus include the nucleus, which actually produce an assemble ribosomes, chromatin, which package DNA and made it to fit into the little space of the nucleus. We also have the nuclear membrane that actually separates the cytoplasm from the nucleus. We have the nucleoplasm, which is a gel-like environment that provides a suitable environment for the nucleus. And the last part of the nucleus is the nuclear pore, which allows ions and molecules to move in and out of the nucleus. The function of the nucleus includes the storage of genetic material necessary for development and reproduction. It also contains all information necessary for protein synthesis and cellular function. DNA replication, transcription, and RNA processing all take place in the nucleus. The next cell organelle or component is the endoplasmic reticulum, 
which is a large membrane-bound organism comprised of a network of small tubular structures. It is actually divided into rough endoplasmic reticulum. As you can see from the diagram being displayed, the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached to them, while smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is the second kind of endoplasmic reticulum, does not have ribosomes attached to them, as you can see from the diagram. The function of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is lipid synthesis, while the rough endoplasmic reticulum is involved in protein synthesis. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is also involved in protein folding and transporting it to the Golgi apparatus. Let's talk about the mitochondria. These are actually membrane-bound organisms and they are commonly termed the powerhouse of the cell. This is because their function is actually to produce energy. It has two membranes, the outer membrane and the inner membrane, as you can see from the diagram. The outer membrane forms a continuous layer or boundary around the mitochondria, while the inner membrane is divided into foods called cristae. It should be noted that the inner membrane is actually semi-permeable, and the inner membrane divides the lumen or the space within the mitochondria into the inner compartment and the outer compartment. The inner compartment is called the matrix, while the outer compartment is called the intermembranous space. And it should be noted again that the function of the mitochondria is energy production. The next organelle or part of the cell that we will discuss is the ribosome. The ribosome is not a membrane-bound organelle. Therefore, it is found in both prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. The function of the ribosome is simply protein synthesis, autosynthesized protein, and it is made up of both ribonucleic acid and proteins. Ribosome consists of two major components, namely the large subunit and the small subunit. Each subunit comprises of ribosomal RNA and protein. Let's talk about the Golgi apparatus as the next component of cell. The Golgi apparatus is named after the scientists that discovered it, Camelo Golgi, and it is made up of many flat, disc-shaped structures called cisterna. As you can see from the diagram, it is divided into the sixth phase and the trans phase. The sixth phase, regarded as the forming phase, is close to the plasma membrane and receives secreted material in vesicles. Why the trans phase? Regarded as the maturing phase is close to the nucleus and it actually releases secreted material into the cell. What are the functions of the Golgi apparatus? It's actually a site for packaging materials within the cell. Proteins are also modified in the Golgi apparatus. It's also an important site for the formation of glycolipids and other substances. Let's talk about the lysosomes. Lysosomes are single membrane bound organelles that contain numerous enzymes capable of digesting a lot of substances. It should be noted that they are called suicide bag because of the digestive enzyme which they possess. This enzyme is capable of engulfing damage or even foreign bodies, microorganisms, and digesting them or destroying them. Another component of cell is the plastids, which are double membrane organelles found in plant cells. They actually contain pigments and they are of three types, namely chloroplast, chromoplast, and leucoplast. Let's talk about the chloroplast. The chloroplast contain chlorophyll that actually absorb sunlight and power the process of photosynthesis, which converts inorganic molecule into chemical energy. Now the structure of the chloroplast includes the outer membrane as you can see from the diagram and the inner membrane. Between the membrane is the intermembranous space. A third internal membrane that is extensively folded and have a closed disc-like structure, what we call the thylakoid, is known as the thylakoid membrane. Note that the third Internal membrane is called the thylakoid membrane, and this closed disc like structure or the thylakoid are tightly arranged in a stack called the grana or singular granum. 
The grana are connected by stroma lamella. As you can see from the diagram, the space between the inner membrane and the thylakoid membrane is filled with stroma. A matrix containing dissolved enzymes, starch granum, and the genome of the chloroplast. The major function of the granum or grana is to conduct the process of photosynthesis. Actually, the light reaction of photosynthesis takes place in the granum, while the stroma contains enzymes, including those necessary for conversion of CO2 or carbophosphate to carbohydrate during the process of photosynthesis. The stroma also houses the genetic system of the chloroplast. In general, the chloroplast is responsible for photosynthesis. Let's talk about the chromoplast. The chromoplast are plastids that actually lack chlorophyll, as you can see from the structure being displayed. They possess the carotenoid pigment, and this is actually responsible for the various colors they impart on the fruits, flowers, and other parts of the plant. The color may be yellow, red, or even orange. They play a role in pollination and dispersion of plants. The third kind of plastids is the leucoplast, which are actually colorless plastids that store either carbohydrate, aminoplast, fat and oil, or protein. As you can see, those that store carbohydrates are regarded as aminoplasts. Those that store fat and oil are regarded as ileoplasts. While those that store protein are either regarded as proteoplasts or aleroplasts. The last component of cell we are going to discuss in this class is cytoskeleton, which is a filamentous network present in the cytoplasm of a cell. Its actual function is to provide mechanical support, maintain the shape of the cell, and help in cell motility. This is the end of this lecture. Please subscribe to support this channel. Thanks for watching.